A funny thing happens on your way to life. There are obstacles, setbacks, roadblocks. The route people take diverges from the route they planned. I didn't eat. <laughs> they said, oh, she misses more classes than she attends and she's not applying herself. If I go back, I'm gonna get killed. Obstacles happen. Some are small, some are devastating. Yet in every obstacle lies a hidden opportunity. This is Jody, a woman with a passion for the road. As a civil engineer, she studies pavement to find out what makes and breaks our roads and highways. A diploma in civil engineering made it possible, a destination Jody never would have imagined in high school. Well, it wasn't that I wasn't the smart person, I just didn't apply myself in high school. My main priority was friends and hanging out. In time, she took a job in a gravel pit and discovered that she liked it. People had been talking about this college program and they said it was really difficult, but I thought, I'll try it, so I did. At 21, Jody's return to school ignited a passion and led to a career. I feel honored to have this job and I think I fit perfectly within the center. She wasn't going to let a few bumps in the road prevent her from studying bumps in the road. Samuel works as a loss prevention investigator. And for Samuel, the road here was no less bumpy. He was one of 12 kids whose parents fled from Romania during the revolution. And for Samuel, a more personal struggle began in school. Grade school was actually very difficult, very, very difficult. Um, for me, basically, I was in a special ed class. Um, and I can honestly say that a lot of the kids made fun of that. In high school, Samuel's teachers warned him he'd never graduate. That's when Samuel put his foot down, insisting he join the students in mainstream classes. At that point, I stated to them that I am not moving from my high school. So they called my parents in, and uh, obviously my dad said, he basically told them, listen to my son, that's what's gonna happen, and here I am. Defying predictions, Samuel enrolled in college. I started off, like, I was kind of thinking firefighter, and then I was like, yeah, look at my size, I'm too scrawny, can't do it. Towards the end of the year, our teacher asked us, like, what do you guys want to do? And then he started naming some programs, and then he mentioned Law and Security Police Foundations. And then I realized, you know, like, that's exactly what I want to do. College volunteering promptly led to real job offers. I got so many jobs while I was in school just from volunteering at the college, which was remarkable because now, I'm able to go out and get a job for $22 an hour. A college diploma helped Samuel, who wasn't supposed to reach post-secondary school, launch a career without borders, which may, ironically, lead him to the border. Five years, I would probably say border services. That's, that's one of my ultimate goals. While Samuel works undercover, Helen is much more evident as a registered nurse practitioner, a job she might not have imagined for herself. After grade 10, I, w I stayed at home until I was almost 21. Helen worked on the family farm in Manitoba. Like her immediate family, none of whom had post-secondary education, Helen was not expected to pursue a career off the farm. But Helen never got that memo. At the age of 28, Having taken elective courses, she set her sights on a career in healthcare and was accepted to college as a mature student. She wasn't going to let a small matter of age stand in her way. It was exciting. I didn't care that I was tw 28. I made, I make friends regardless of their ages. Like one, some of my best friends are like 21, 22. I didn't care. We just had a blast. One very familiar obstacle remained finances. That's always the biggest part of it all. And I was totally on my own. You know, I don't have parents who paid my way. With financial assistance, hard work, a tutor's help, and group study brought Helen a world away from her farming past towards her goal of one day working as a registered nurse in palliative care. Her goal is reaching her potential though that's not the wording Helen prefers. Helping people and putting a smile to their faces if I can. Literally and figuratively, Helen's story unfolded thousands of miles away from that of Brandon. Like so many high school students, 
new career possibilities can be as exciting as they are unexpected. I wasn't really focused on college at the time. I was more focused on what needed to be done in uh, high school, I suppose. In the beginning, I wanted to be uh, more of an architect, but then I discovered that I can't draw. And then I was kind of flip-flopping between courses, and I eventually wound up taking a marketing course in grade 11, and I just really loved it. And the obstacles they present might be as close to home as a parent's expectations. My mother, uh, like many people, doesn't gain the, doesn't understand the value of marketing in the real world. She wanted me to be an accountant because of my love with numbers, and I'm good at accounting, I just don't have a passion for it. Opportunities are available to any student who really wants to be here. I mean, I don't have uh, the funds to be here on my own, so I rely heavily on scholarships and financial aid. And trust me, if you deserve to be here, you will be here. The money is out there. It's just a really good ego booster, I suppose, to find to say, I know what I love, and this is what I'm going to do. Don't be afraid to fight for what you believe in. Because people like my mother, and I'm sure there's going to be at least one person in every college student's life who has them, who's down their throat saying, you should go to university. But of course, this is just so much better. And there's plenty of time for university down the road. Manny's life today, with a vibrant career and close family, is worlds away from the dangerous roads he trod just a few short years ago. School was shut down and, and some of my friends got in jail and they got tortured and they, um, they got abused. So my family was afraid of me being into the same situation so they decided for me to leave the country. Manny found himself alone in Canada with no family, no home and struggling to learn English. I started living in a, in a, in a house with a couple and that's how I started speaking more, communicating more. And, and I used to make mistakes and, and, and uh, pronouncing words and still do, but you know, English is such a complicated language. But these people were able to help me out. I met my wife uh, back in 1993. We got married, we had a child. One of the motivations I had was from my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, and they, they used to tell us, you, you guys are young people, you came to this country to succeed. Now that you have a kid, you, you, got, you got married, don't stop here. Life doesn't stop here, okay? Fulfill your dreams, go back to school. You know, we got the support of the family. The first year when, when I got married, uh, my wife went back to school, and I was just so desperate for her to finish so I could go back myself. Then, a break. Manny auditioned for the host of a local Spanish-speaking radio program, who recommended him for a college course in broadcasting. After acing an English language refresher course, Manny wasn't about to let the opportunity pass. I went into the, into the, uh, to the classroom there where they were interviewing people, and I said, I'm gonna go and do whatever it takes to succeed in this program. As a new Canadian, Manny Singh was on his way. Emigrating from his home country, he built a new life and a new career using tools given him at college. Michael is building a career on culinary excellence, despite some unsavory barriers. The biggest being money. I didn't eat. <laughs> I would get up, I'd go to school, go to work, come home, do my homework, get and you know, just it was that routine that I had myself in and I'd bring food home from work and you know when I got the paychecks I'd go out and buy my groceries and that. While his schooling went reasonably well, Michael's pull to the kitchen was more necessity than a choice. Growing up, it was pretty much just, I'd wake up in the morning and my mom would want to cook dinner or cook breakfast, so I would myself. So I've been cooking breakfast mainly since I was about eight or nine, and I just kind of kept going with it. Michael became the first in his immediate family to choose college and found the resources to overcome financial barriers. And upon graduation, it was his college diploma that not only boosted his confidence, it also helped some kitchen doors fly open. I walk into a restaurant and be like, you know, here's my resume, this is what I have. And, you know, uh, when I was got hired on at McGinnis, we had um, 
I got a call back within two hours of dropping off a resume just because of this program. Life is about obstacles, of confidence, of finances, of expectations or lack of expectations, or wrong turns and personal baggage. These are only a few of thousands of stories where college helped clear the road of obstacles and barriers. For these very different people with vastly different stories, college opened a world of possibility. You can go anywhere in the world you want and everybody always needs to eat. For me to have the opportunity to go to college was tremendous. Maybe I didn't realize it while I was doing it, but now that I look back, I would tell anyone to do it. It's you that is in charge of your own destiny. Going to college has changed my life. Stick to your guns and don't be afraid to get a little dirty. It's worth it. After you're done, the sky's the limit for you.